I'm Pip Hare and we are here on board my Imoka Super Bigu, which is the boat I'm going to race in next year's Vendée Globe. And I'd just like to give you a bit of a tour around. Um, so I'm currently standing uh, on the aft deck. Uh, my tiller's there. Most Imokas now are, are using tillers to steer rather than wheels. Um, if we step down into the cockpit, so this is, is quite a small area and, and this is significantly different from, from pretty much all the other boats that I'm racing against. Um, so because my cockpit is so small, it's an older generation boat, um, I don't have a coffee grinder, which means all of my winches are top grind, uh, which does make things a little bit challenging at times. <laughs> I do wish I had a coffee grinder. And when I came back from my first race, I had uh, one bicep twice the size of the other one because I've been holding on with one hand and winding on the other. So I need to always remember to wind with both hands. Um, but in terms of sort of my my day-to-day -day trimming and that sort of thing, I can do everything from this area here and it's a really nice, secure place to be. Uh, so moving down here, under here, this is my cuddy. So uh, when the weather's really bad, uh, I can just sit behind here and close these down and it keeps me out of the wet. And it's really important for, for solo ocean races, it's actually really important to stay as, as warm and as dry as possible. Now, again, in the more modern boats, they've really, really taken that concept <laughs> and made it viable because all of the cockpits are enclosed and, and many of them are now actually trimming their sails and steering from inside an enclosed position. Me, I, um, I have to be out in the elements all the time unless I'm under here. So I think by the time we've finished the Vendée, uh, uh, some of the skippers are gonna come back uh, without a tan even, and I'm, I'm gonna look fairly weathered. So now we've come up to the bow, um, and I'm just gonna talk you through uh, what I use for head sails. So, um, I am not going to use a J1 when I go around the world. So normally uh, we would have our J1 permanently fixed to the forestay. Um, but actually, when you think about the average wind going around the world, I wouldn't need to use my J1 that often. And having the sail permanently fixed up there for me represents quite a risk. Because if anything happens to it, let's say for example it got damaged or it sort of started to half unfurl when it was windy, I would have to climb up the mast to get it down. So uh, just like Alan who used the boat before me in 2016, I've decided not to go for a J1. Instead I'm using a J2 and a J3 which uh, I secure on halyard locks and they stay permanently up and furled on the foredeck. And also the storm jib, which flies from here, is a racing sail as well. My spinnakers, um, I have one furling spinnaker and all the rest are in snuffers. Um, when I hoist and drop, uh, particularly the ones in the snuffers, I start with them down in the hatch down here. I fix up as much as I can in there. I'll hoist them out of there and then drop them down into there as well, bag them, and then if I'm going downwind, all of the sails have to be stacked onto the transom to keep the bow out anyway, and that's quite a job because my heaviest sail when it's dry is 90 kilos, so getting that out of here is, is quite an effort. Uh, and then finally, if we look back here, uh, you can see the canard. So again, one of the differences that, that my boat has to the more modern boats is that I just have a single inline canard uh, and they prefer twin canards, uh, twin dagger boards. Um, so this is uh, four meters deep and any time that the keel is canted, then I'll use this to create lift. So now we're down in my living accommodation and you, you know it's the living accommodation because it's uh, painted magnolia. So the rest of the boat is black carbon and this is the, the only part of the boat that has uh, paint on it. And this is where I will spend the majority of my time during the race. I've got everything that I need here. So I sleep uh, on a bean bag um, and I have that on the floor. Sometimes I'll take the beanbag into the cuddy and sleep outside. Um, all my electronics are come to this panel here. So 
everything come, comes in there. It's nice and easy for me to access and it's all really well laid out. And I have redundancy across everything. So I have two pilots, two rams, two wind instruments, two GPS. So at any one time, I can have one thing um, break down. I can engage the second and that gives me time to uh, fix the first. Um, but basically, I'm starting the race with the idea that every single thing on the boat is going to break at some point and I need to be able to uh, give myself time to fix it. Under the steps here, I have a, a jet boil. Um, so all of my food is, is freeze dried um, and my jet boil is under there. And then behind in the, in the area behind here, I've got a water maker, uh, which is 30 litres an hour. So um, I'll keep a reservoir of around 30 litres topped up all the time. Um, and I'm using that for drinking and for cooking. And also I will just be spraying my face regularly to get some of the salt off it. Um, in terms of the safety kit on board, um, I've got um, multiple different ways of calling for help. So on either side of the companion here, there are, are two EPIRBs. And one of the things we have to do for the Amoka rule is we have to have a, uh, a dummy plug in the bottom of the boat. So if the boat goes upside down, uh, we are able to put antennas for EPIRBs and SATCOMs through the bottom of the hull because of course carbon hull you're going to find it difficult to get um, any signal through. Um, and all of my stores and my spares and my tools they all get kept in the area under the cockpit here. Then if we just uh, move forward here so climbing through this bulkhead here uh, in here is my engine room, uh, so I've got two fuel tanks, a water maker and uh, a heater in here. And then uh, that's also where I camp my keel. So the other unusual thing about this boat is that I have a block and tackle system for canting my keel. So it's just, uh, it's ropes that go onto an electric winch. I'm allowed to have a powered winch and that's how I move the keel from side to side. Now. What that means is that I need to have a bigger lever on the top of the keel to move it because I don't have the power of a hydraulic ram. So the second compartment forward from here is where my keel is housed and uh, the, the axis for the, for the keel is in the bottom of the boat, uh, which is open. So that, that area of the boat is full of water and then above the axis is a two meter keel uh, head and ropes that come off the top so I can pull it from side to side. Uh, and this really is unusual because my competitors all use hydraulic rams so they have a tiny little keel head and that's all boxed in. Um, but I just have a whole compartment in the boat that's just full of water, which is odd. Um, if I want to get to the bow of the boat, um, and, and don't want to open the big hatch on the foredeck, then you, just here, there's a, 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 a hole in the bulkhead and I effectively have like a little tunnel and I can crawl through the tunnel and come out in the bow. And then there's another tunnel that goes through here that will take me into the stern where the rudders are and the autopilots and the steering system. Um, and I've got quite used to climbing through the tunnel, but the first time I took the boat out um, and I needed to go and, and have a look at what was going on in the bow and I sort of got halfway through the tunnel and then an alarm went off in here and it's absolutely terrifying because the boat is charging along and you're sort of stuck in a tunnel halfway down the side of it. You kind of, you need to be really sure that everything's okay before you go down there. Uh, but this basically is home.